Hey everyone, in this Photoshop tutorial we will be creating a panoramic drone image using Photoshop and of course do the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. For this shot we will be applying some quite heavy changes, making this whole shot a lot darker, adding some golden light and probably also add some motion blur to those clouds in the sky. If you want to follow along you can find all the raw files in the description of the video and now let's begin. So here we are in the camera raw editor, down here you can see I have opened all the files I need, with this one being the panoramic image, but of course first we need to merge this image, therefore I got three different drone shots. So to create a panoramic image I'm going to hold down the control key and click on all the images I want to combine, then right click and here let's say merge to panorama. If the projection method is set to spherical, it might look a little bit strange as you can see. You could try use the boundary warp like this, but I'm not sure if the quality is good enough then. I however like to use the perspective mode, since it gives a much more natural looking image. So once you have set this up, just hit the merge button. And after combining the image, we will end up with a panoramic shot like this. You can see I already have applied some cropping on this shot because I want to have the focus on this river in the center bottom part. So after we have cropped the shot, let's work on the exposure. Right away you can see it's quite heavily overexposed. Thankfully the dynamic range of this drone is pretty good, so we can handle that without using HDR. First off, let me change the profile to Adobe Neutral. If you don't have this profile, in the menu, make sure to check out the Browse button right here and under the Adobe RAW settings you should find Adobe Neutral. So let's go back. Adobe Neutral will of course give us a very neutral look and you can see it will drop the highlights and raise the shadows so we can add the contrast manually. I also want to change the white balance to cloudy which will give us some more natural color tones. We do have some richer green tones in here as you can see. Then let's bring down the exposure and try to fix the brightness of the image. Also I want to bring down the highlights and I'm going to drop them all the way and you can see now we have a lot more detail in the sky. That looks pretty good. Of course we're lacking contrast, we can try to change it by using the contrast slider. However adding contrast globally like that isn't always a good solution but more on that later. For now I do want to introduce some texture, giving this image a sharper look. And I guess I want to also add some clarity and even some dehaze, which again serves to add some contrast. Just like that maybe, perfect. And finally I'd like to add some vibrance, just to have some stronger color tones. Nice. So let's compare it to before, we can see the overexposure is pretty much gone. We do have a little less contrast I think, but overall the image already looks much more pleasing. We can do a lot more using a few local adjustments, so let's start with that. First off, let us work on the sky, for that reason I'm using a simple linear gradient and just drag it down like that and try to cover the whole sky. In here of course just drop the exposure. And I want to make the sky very dark, so I'm dropping the exposure quite a bit. Just like that. That's it for the first linear gradient. I want to add another one right away. Again, I'm using it for the sky, but I'm starting it a little further down. So more of the clouds in the upper part are affected. Again, I'm dropping the exposure. I also want to drop the temperature since right now the clouds do look a little too yellowish for my taste. And at the same time I want to bring down the saturation, just to keep the colors rather neutral there. Alright, and then to add some structure to those clouds I like to use clarity. And as I already know I'm going to apply motion blur to those clouds up there. I'm going to push the clarity quite a bit more than usual, just to have more contrast in here, which later will just look a little better with the motion blur. Alright, that's it for the sky for now. Next up, let's work on the foreground I guess. 
and especially that forest in the very bottom part is an area which I want to make a little darker to bring the focus on the river in the center. So let's create another linear gradient covering most of the forest in the foreground. Probably like that. Now I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and here of course I'm covering the center area which is important to the image. Now this radial gradient is a little bit too soft so let's just bring down the feather giving the mask just a harder edge. Perfect. So we might need to subtract some more using a brush. Now with this mask I'm going to bring down the shadows a notch. Just like that should be enough. And then I do want to work on the landscape itself. Therefore let's create a sky selection. This is working pretty good on this image because we have a nice edge between the landscape and the sky. And since I want to work on the landscape, I'm going to invert that selection. Just like that. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the near foreground because that's an area which I don't want to change. And in here, let's pump up the contrast. And let's also increase the temperature, giving the landscape some more of a golden hour light. Let's pump it up quite a bit. That looks really, really good. All right, then as usual, I want to add some glow. Therefore, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm creating a rather big one. Of course, you need to bring back the feather to 100 to have a soft edge here. Then let's rotate this mask to fit the light direction. Uh, let's place it like this and bring up the exposure. And let's slightly bring up the blacks. I might not even add that much glow, but this looks pretty good. Uh, let's add one more radial gradient for the horizon level. Just a rather thin one this time. Again, I'm placing it over the edge of the image. And in here, let's bring up the whites, adding some more brightness to the horizon. And in here, also, I want to drop the dehaze just for some glow in here. Perfect. It's looking really good. Now, of course, I also want to change that river a little bit. This part is a bit trickier. Um, let's start with the color range mask. I'm going to try to select a fitting color here from the river. Maybe this spot. And I'm going to bring down the refine slider just to more specifically target that river. It's actually not looking that bad. Still, I need to subtract with the brush tool and just brush over everything else which I don't want to change. Especially here in the forest and back here. So that looks like a proper mask. Let's try and erase the exposure. Looking good so far. I'm also going to erase the highlights and the whites just building up some more brightness here and I could even raise the clarity that works as well nice looks much better now one more thing I want to add another radial gradient a really really big one this time I'm aligning it to the light coming in so just rotate it a bit and I want to cover the landscape here and in here I'm going to push the highlights I'm adding some more temperature just like that. Now there were quite some changes going on. Let's compare to before and we now have pretty much a completely different image. The exposure looks so much better and the contrast is looking good as well. So now let's start with the color grading and I'm starting in the color mixer tab. Here let's go into the hue panel. I want to bring down the yellow hue slightly and I also want to drop the green hue a bit because I do want to have more yellowish color tones in the foreground landscape. Then in the saturation tab, let's bring up the yellow saturation and actually let's also raise the blue saturation. Perfect. Then in the luminance tab, I'm going to raise yellow 
and I'm dropping green and I'm also dropping the blue tones. All right, that looks good. And let's do the split toning for the highlights. I'm going to apply a warm color tone, of course, somewhere in that range. And let's bring down the saturation a bit. We don't want to overdo it, but that looks good. For the midtones, I'm using a blue color tone somewhere here. And let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to raise it quite a bit, but that looks pretty good. Finally, in the calibration tab, I am going to drop the blue hue and let's raise the saturation. Perfect. And that's it for the raw adjustments. We can now finish this shot in Photoshop. So there are quite a few things I need to change. First off, I want to fix the horizon. Therefore, I'm creating a guideline just like that. And I'm placing it just on the horizon level. And you can immediately see it's not really straight. So I'm going to hit Ctrl T, right click in the image and select Warp. Then I'm just dragging the image up on the horizon level and thus create a straight horizon. Once that's done, I'm hitting OK and the horizon is fixed. We might need to crop a little bit because the Warp tool added some gaps to the image, but that should be fine. Next up, let's work on the sky. There's an ugly, pretty bright cloud up there, which I want to get rid of. So let me use the clone stem tool and just try to fix those brighter gaps in here. Then let me do some dodging and burning. Therefore I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. And for the dodging and burning as usual, I'm using the TK panel plugin just so I can target specific areas of the image. In this case, I want to target the bright spots in the landscape. That means I'm using a lights mask and I'm just going through all those masks to find a fitting mask. Let's try lights too for this image. Create a layer mask on the overlay layer and use a white brush. Let's bring up the brush opacity and then I'm just brushing over the areas which I want to brighten up. So I want to brighten up everything that's getting hit by the light. Just like that. And this way we are just adding some more contrast to this image. Of course, we can do the same with the shadows. So let's add another new layer. Go with the overlay blending mode again. Head into the TK panel plugin. And this time we are targeting the shadows. Actually, I think I want to target the midtones. Otherwise, we might end up with underexposure. So here I'm going to use a mid-tones mask, just like this one, and add it as a layer mask again. Then instead of white, we're going to use black since we want to darken the area. Here I'm going to drop the brush opacity and then let's brush over the areas which I want to darken. Mainly the near foreground, of course. Maybe in the forest here as well and here in the back. Okay, that looks really good. Then I do want to add a little more glow up there. So create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, grab the brush tool, use a warm bright foreground color, just like that and bring down the brush opacity again. And with this brush, I'm just painting in a little glow up here. Not too much, I don't want to overdo it, but that looks pretty good. Then let's work on the sky. For that reason, I'm going to merge everything here and then go to select and here choose sky. With that selection going on, I'm hitting Ctrl C to copy it and Ctrl V to create a new layer with that sky. Then I'm holding down the Ctrl key and click on that sky layer. And with that selection active, I'm going to filter. And here let's go blur gallery, path blur. With the path blur, we can create paths throughout the image along which Photoshop will blur the image so we can get a little more natural motion blur for those clouds. So I'm just going to add a few different directions for a more natural look. Just like that. And you can see I'm using a rather low speed. I'm not changing much here anyway. And just hit OK. All right, then I'm hitting Ctrl D for deselection. And at this point, I'm merging those two layers again 
and now we can take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. So first off, let me use the polarization effect to just enchant the color some more. So I'm bringing up the strength here, just like that. Then I'm going to add another one. Here I do want to use the pro contrast effect, just adding some more dynamic contrast. Actually, no, let's just use correct contrast. Okay, then I do want to add one more filter. Here I do want to use the classical soft focus effect. Uh, let's go with the third soft focus method and I only want to apply it on the sky so I'm going to use a control point and just place it over the area where I want to apply it. I can add one more if I want to just like that. Okay I guess I could bring down the strength though but this is looking really really good. So let's apply it like that. All right, and here we have the finished image. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.